All right, hello and welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. If anybody wants to support me, PayPal and Patreon links are both down below. It's been almost a month since I made that uh, various water levels video about the current ongoing drought in the western U.S. A situation that has not improved. I know, you didn't see that one coming, did you? So it's been about a month, so I figured uh, let's do a July update. And so, going down the various water levels, but starting with one of the big ones that's probably uh, getting some of the most headlines. Lake Mead, a massive reservoir at the southern end of Nevada. Water supply for the 3 million people of the Las Vegas area, aka basically all of Nevada's population. As well as, semi, not entirely secretly, uh, the a major water supply for much of Southern California and the 18 plus million people of the Los Angeles area. As Los Angeles and much of Southern California gets their water uh, pumped through hundreds of miles of pipelines through the Colorado River aqueduct system. Uh, the pipeline's intake is at a smaller reservoir uh, down on that border. So when the river isn't uh, flowing all that great, like in harsh drought conditions like uh, the present, and overall, like uh, in the long term, the past two and a half decades, the reservoirs further up the river, like Lake Mead and Lake Powell, have to uh, constantly release extra water to flow down river to keep uh, those reservoirs down on the border where the pipeline intake system is at a uh, desirable level. So Lake Mead, uh, like many of the other reservoirs in the U.S., is not measured by its actual depth. It's measured uh, by elevation feet or how high in elevation the uh, surface of the water is above sea level. And a full Lake Mead would be up at uh, 1,229 elevation feet. However, uh, the days of that are long since uh, put behind us. And Lake Mead will empty out at about 915 feet or so. And as of the uh, most recent few years, it has gone below 1,100 feet. As like with many other uh, rivers and reservoirs, it has seasonal fluctuations with the, uh, the different uh, climate patterns that occur throughout the year. So you typically see uh, patterns of a refill or replenishment season versus the, uh, the regular drawdown season. And then after uh, getting back up to about 1098, Lake Mead, over the course of last year, Lake Mead dropped all the way down towards 1080. And last year's refill season only recovered back up to like uh, 1086 or 1087. And uh, since then it has been dropping and dropping. And last time we reported about a month ago, it was down into the lower 1070s. And as of now is down even further, down to 1,068 elevation feet as its water level. And keep in mind with uh, lakes and reservoirs, they get narrower and narrower the further down you go. So each foot of water level lower you go uh, has volumetrically less water than the foot above it did. And for the moment, uh, Lake Mead has paused in its drop uh, for the last few days because there has actually been some uh, thunderstorm activity popping up in Nevada and Utah. Further up the river, Lake Powell, which is another large reservoir. Uh, it's on the southern end of Utah, and its job is uh, basically the same as Lake Mead, but for Lake Mead as Lake Mead keeps releasing extra water downriver to keep those border reservoirs full. Lake Powell, further upriver from Lake Mead, constantly releases extra water downriver to uh, keep Lake Mead from dropping too fast. Granted, Lake Mead is still dropping too fast anyways, but Lake Powell is trying to slow it down and failing. And Lake Powell is heading on its way down as well. Uh, full Lake Powell would be at 3,700 feet of elevation. Empty Lake Powell would be at around 3,200. But again, keep in mind, it gets narrower and narrower the further down you go. So the lower you go, the faster you keep going lower, basically. And at the start of the year, Lake Powell was at about 3,580 feet. It dropped down to around 3,560. It regained a little bit uh, for a short while during its uh, brief refill respite. It has since resumed dropping and has uh, dropped back down by another 5 feet, down to 3,556. Over in California, the water-hungry state itself, the San Francisco area, roughly 7 million people or so uh, living around the bay, gets its water uh, 
gets its water brought to it uh, by a fair distance from the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, which normally uh, fares a lot better. And uh, during its refill season, each year normally uh, is able to replenish back up to completely full. Full for Hetch Hetchy is uh, 3,806 feet of elevation. Empty is uh, about 3,500. And normally each year it goes through a pattern, will be drawn down to about 3,750, 3,740 then replenish uh, each year all the way back up to 3806. However, last year things were starting to get severe and it uh, went almost all the way down to 3700 itself. And uh, during the refill replenishment season, it uh, fell about 20 feet short. It got up to the 86. And, uh, and since then it has uh, been dropping and gradually started dropping a bit faster has been dropping uh, steady now for the last couple weeks and is at 3,775. Back down in Southern California, some of the water in the region is uh, also taken from the, uh, the much smaller Owens River. And most of the rivers are measured by flow rate. The Owens River normally, at least at this time of year, is at around 250 cubic feet per second or so. And the Owens River has been pretty low it's been sticking around 50 or so usually around like 40 50 60 as high as 70 uh, for the last several months or so again normally under historically normal conditions it would be uh higher up at around 250 and it has been regaining some level uh just very recently it's made it back up to about 65 cubic feet per second now and working our way back up uh, we'll start with the San Joaquin River, normally at this time of year at about uh, 400 cubic feet per second. However, as of uh, recent times, it's been really low, consistently under 100, as low as 40 even very recently. Uh, however, it's uh, just started to regain a bit uh, because of some recent bouts of rain and thunderstorms. And it has uh, made it back up to around 70 or 80 or so. And upriver, you'll find Millerton Lake Reservoir, which like many others has been on its way down. And over the course of this year so far, it has uh, dropped from about 520 down to now stopping around 503 feet. And for its context, uh, full would be up at 561, uh, empty would be down at 242. But like with the others, uh, keep in mind it gets volumetrically much less and less with each extra foot you go down. And also, I forgot to mention uh, closer to the beginning, like I should have, don't forget also uh, the water doesn't teleport out of the uh, the reservoirs into your pipelines and everything. It, it has intake systems in, in the reservoirs, which are, you know, at certain levels, and they're not at the absolute bottom. They're not like a drain at the absolute lowest point of the reservoir. They're usually a, a decent bit above the bottom out point actually. So do keep in mind also the, the ability to actually intake water out of the reservoir would be gone well before the reservoir actually reaches its lowest point. Further up uh, around Sacramento, water primarily coming from the Sacramento and American rivers. The Sacramento River, normally at this time of year, is around 260 or so cubic feet per second. And uh, presently, it's at about 160, it's, which is higher than it has been uh, in, more, in more recent times. In recent months, it was uh, uh, decently lower than that and has even been under 100. And if you follow the Sacramento River up north, you will find... Lake Shasta Reservoir, which has been at decent speed, you guessed it, on its way down. In this particular uh, decline season, it has uh, been dropping from about 980 all the way down to previously, last month uh, when we did that video, 947. Now a month later, uh, down 17 feet further to 930 feet of its uh, elevation water level. And for, and for its context, full would be at uh, 1,067, empty would be at about 550, or just under it at 549. But again, it gets narrower and narrower the further down you go. 
and uh, at what particular depth or level the the water intake system for the water that gets drawn from it is I have no idea the American River larger uh, normally has a flow rate at this time of year of around 3,500 cubic feet per second and uh, it has been decently below that uh, like most of the other rivers have with their own rates and it's been fluctuating around between only 1,000 and 2,000 cubic feet per second presently all the way down at only 1,000 and if you follow the American River you will eventually find it's being fed from the Folsom Lake Reservoir which is take a guess which direction it's on its way down uh, so far this year it has dropped from about 400 feet in elevation water level down to last time 390 uh, this time a month later uh, down by another 10 feet just under 380 with its context being full would be at 466 and empty would be down at about 216 again Again, what depth or level the uh, the water intake system pipes are at, I don't know. And uh, the last piece for California, the probably the most famous one, the one that gets the most attention at least because it's almost definitely going to bottom out, Lake Orville Reservoir uh, has been going way down this year. From 730 all the way down now to 660 elevation feet with its uh, full level being, uh, I believe it's up near 900 or so, and its uh, bottom out point being around 640. And uh, given, you can see, how fast it's been losing its level, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going for it. Now, moving the spotlight away from the state that seeks it out the most, uh, shifting over to Arizona. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, roughly five and a half million people in the middle of a desert for who knows what reason. Phoenix is surrounded by a number of reservoirs in its, uh, its immediate area. And, and they measure those by just a collective total percentage full. And they have their normal yearly cycle as well. However, uh, their replenishing or refill season did not play out so well last year. They had uh, gone down to around 70 in terms of uh, percentage collective full, and they replenished up to about 76, whereas normally they would have uh, kept going up into the 80s and even 90s. However, they stopped at around 76 and uh, started dropping again, and now they're down below 70, down to 66% uh, full currently. And over to the east of them, in New Mexico, we have the Rio Grande River at its measuring point uh, near Albuquerque in New Mexico. Normally at this time of year, uh, it would be at about 700 cubic feet per second of a flow rate. And instead, it's been all the way down uh, up until just recently, like the last few days, at only about 100 cubic feet per second. However, uh, all those uh, sudden storm flare-ups have uh, given it some sudden life back. You can see uh, you can see it boosting back up for brief periods and falling back down. And even after the drops back down, it's been managing to still hold around 200 cubic feet per second instead of just 100. And then also the smaller Pecos River, which feeds into the Rio Grande River. The Pecos River, uh, normally at this time of year, is only at about 70 cubic feet per second. And up until just recently, it was below that. However, now because of uh, the sudden storms and everything, it's actually above its normal position, one of the uh, few ones that actually is, and has been around 160 to 170 cubic feet per second. Up in Utah, Salt Lake City, where basically all of Utah's population is for the most part. Salt Lake City gets its water from uh, creeks and rivers that flow down from the nearby mountains, and when you follow those up to uh, their reservoirs, you find, guess what direction they're going in. We won't say down anymore in case it scares too many people, but they're going not up. So we'll start with the Pine View Reservoir. Normally, if full, would be at around 4,900 uh, feet of elevation for the water level. If empty, it would be down at around 4,817. Yeah, it's not as deep as those others. 
and previously for its refill season from the prior year it uh, got back up to about 4895 4896 and since then it has fallen down a uh, decent ways and is uh down towards around 4867 feet deer creek reservoir nearby if full would be at about uh, 5417 feet and if empty would be at 5279 and it's been on its way down too and over the last uh, month and a third or so the last 40 days it has uh dropped from 5401 down to 5392 and the jordanelle reservoir which is uh measured in percentage instead i've only been paying attention to that one for the last uh two weeks or so and and uh, it was already down to 70% full and is now down to 67% full. And although not the source of drinking water, uh, the Great Salt Lake does uh, still provide a decent indicator of the uh, situation, including the long-term situation, as you can probably see between the two different uh, sized versions of it one from several decades ago and one from now the great salt lake also has uh seasonal fluctuations over the course of the year it's its water its water level does increase and decrease for example last year it uh, got as low as the upper 50s in percentage uh, full and uh, then recovered back up into the 60s and uh since it started dropping down this year it's dropped all the way down to only 51% full. And lastly, up in the Northwest, Washington and Oregon, two states that are normally known for uh, plentiful rainfall. In Oregon, the Willamette River uh, is measured in percentage, and it's doing a little bit better today than it was a month ago when we made the prior video. Uh, back then, it was 23% below its uh, normal level. And uh, as of now, it's only 19% below its normal level. And the much larger Columbia River that forms the, uh, or most of the border between Washington and Oregon, is uh, normally, for a decent bit of the time, up at around 30 or 35,000 cubic feet per second. At this particular time of year right now, it uh, usually dips down closer to 25. And uh, last time, a month ago, it was down to around uh, 20,000 cubic feet per second and now it's been fluctuating a bit in the upper teens but on loose average it's now down to about 17,000 cubic feet per second so as i said at the end of the uh, last one a month ago the situation was not good uh, now the situation is less good but regardless one way or another uh, there's our updated water levels as of the present moment but that is it for this one, one way or another. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. There's a lot of other stuff like energy and mining and resources and everything. There's plenty of other episodes for you to look around and see what I mean. Anybody who wants to support me, PayPal and Patreon links are both down below. Only do so if you actually can. And no matter what, may God bless, protect, and save all of you. And I will see you all around next time.